We're getting chickens today. It's chicken day. It's chicken day, but it's raining, um, which is okay. We're just out here in the rain. Um, we brought home the chicken tractor last night, um, and this morning we're trying to get the chicken tractor into the backyard. Uh, we've got to move some cars around so we can move the chicken tractor through the fence. Um, so yeah. I think it kind of, the rain lightened up, which is awesome. But I'm going to get chickens today. Hey guys, what's up? I'm driving home. Um, this morning I drove um, about 30 minutes away from my house uh, to go pick up my first chickens. Um, so I'm obviously thrilled. Um, I was a little bit, you know, last night and this morning, like, am I crazy? Like, am I? Um, because it's just outside of my comfort zone. I've never had, you know, any kind, I've never even had like a bird as a pet. Um, I've never had any kind of like farm animal livestock. Um, but yes, it was outside of my comfort zone. Glad I did it. Um, so yeah, I, I went and I picked them up. Um, they are Sapphire Gem chickens, um, which is like not an officially like recognized breed. It's like a newer cross, um, but they, uh, they're like this beautiful light gray, like lavender color. And they lay these light pink looking eggs and uh, I got four uh, pullets, um, so they are, they haven't started laying yet, but they're due to start laying within the next month, um, so before the end of April. Uh, we got the chicken tractor for my friend last night. Um, as soon as I get home, my husband's going to help me uh, unload the chicken tractor off of the trailer, and I'll get it all set up, and I'll show you um, what it looks like when I introduce my girls to their new home, um, and yeah, I'll tell you their names too. Chickens! So the footage you just saw was about a week ago, um, eight days. I've had my chickens for eight days now, and in that time I lost a chicken and gained a chicken. So I still have four chickens, um, but it's been a learning process. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's like for better or for worse. I love these guys. Um, they're definitely not just utilitarian for me right now, my, my backyard flock. Um, they're so soft and they're so cute and sweet and they let me hold them and I love them um, and everything wants to eat them everything wants to eat them um, so I'm about to show you guys I have them in a chicken tractor a wonderful awesome chicken tractor that I got from one of my friends who used to keep chickens so this is the chicken tractor um, besides this dog kennel over here this is just so the brand new chicken I just got today can get introduced to the flock um, this is the chicken tractor. It is a mobile chicken coop. Um, so it's got this rope on this end. It has wheels on the other end and it's really light. It's like a, a very light frame that I can move around because the point of a chicken tractor is that uh, you move it every day or every couple of days so that, um, you know, the chicken droppings don't build up um, and, you know, become an odor problem. Um, and of course, while they are moving around, they need something secure. So it's got a door where I can go in there. They're um, hanging feeder and waterer. They've got a roost bar back there. Um, and there's some nesting boxes here. Um, and now we've got this tarp so that they can have um, some shade and some shelter from wind and the rain to some degree um, and you'll see all of this 
know, these cinder blocks and things along the side. And that is because our yard is not perfectly flat. Um, there are lots of different contours in our backyard. And so there end up being gaps um, in different spots along the bottom. And that is a predator hazard. So the second night that my chickens were here, the second night I lost a chicken to a predator because um, these chickens are, they were about 12 weeks old when I got them and they were in a much, um, they were kept in a much smaller chicken tractor and she had been teaching them to roost with um, sticks and things but they really didn't understand that they were supposed to roost on this roosting bar up here. They hadn't learned that yet and so the first two nights the chickens were sleeping in just on the ground in a corner of the coop and um, I thought that I had you know I had recognized that there were gaps around the edges and I had put certain things in place to to try and make sure there weren't any gaps but evidently in the corner that the chickens chose to sleep in um, there was a gap and something reached in under that gap grabbed a chicken and um, had some dinner so that was rough oh my god that was rough um i mean i'd only had the chickens for two days but I, when i saw when i came out that morning and saw the dead chicken i it was uh i was pretty torn up i cried a lot um and i know that that's gonna happen but that was my first time of ever you know this is the first time i've ever had like livestock animals and the first time I've ever lost one and uh, so yeah so then I was like okay these these but when I came out the next morning and I saw the dead chicken the other three chickens were roosting on the roost bar which they had not done previously so after that experience they learned that they need to roost on the roost bar but that process of using like PVC pipes and bricks to plug up all of the openings around the edges of the chicken tractor, that took like an hour. And the point of a chicken tractor, it's supposed to be easy to move. It's supposed to be something that I can just come out here and pull and, you know, five minutes and be done with it. So, um, bricks and the pipes and pieces of wood and things like that that's not a good solution I'm going to actually later today end up modifying the coop I think what I'm going to do is I have um, I got a bunch of rolls of hardware cloth um, which is you know chicken wire has really big gaps in it that predators like weasels and raccoons can actually reach through so I got hardware cloth which has little square openings that's just like a quarter of an inch openings that nothing can reach through. And I'm going to essentially make like a skirt around the bottom of the coop. Um, and that's also going to deter, you know, foxes or things from digging. It's pretty crazy. Like we, we don't live, we live in Alabama, but we really don't live out in the country. But I guess we've got enough wooded areas nearby and we've got... We had some clear cutting going on down the street that we have predators. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be making a video showing how I'm going to modify this coop. You guys want to meet them? Um, so initially I had the four chickens and I was trying to think of a good you know, name for them that was like a, um, four, you know, four ladies or something. So they are the Golden Girls. Um, Sophia, Dorothy, Blanche, and Rose. And since we lost one, um, and we had, I hadn't really named each of them individually before I lost one. So now that I have a fourth uh, chicken again, I'm just going to name that one Rose. Um, because honestly, I feel like the chicken that got eaten would have been Rose. Meet the chickens. So they've gotten a lot bigger just in the last week that I've had them. They really kind of filled out. They look wider. Um, they're also 
they're kind of like chasing each other around a little bit, which they only started doing that in the last couple of days, which is pretty cute. Hi. And they're really friendly. They had been handled quite a bit. Um, my chicken dealer, <laughs> um, I joke that she's my chicken dealer now because I've heard that chickens are addicting. But my chicken dealer has kids who love these chickens and, and love to handle them. So um, we're trying to come out and handle them every day so that they, um, so that that's something that they enjoy. This is the setup um, I've got with their roosting bar. Um, their roosting bar is uh, this largest one here. And I put this stick, um, propped it up, and tied it with um, some twine. And they they actually climb up that stick and sit on the roosting bar. And I think eventually they should be able to just fly up, to just jump and get on the roosting bar. But for now, I definitely want them on that roosting bar, so I'm giving that, them that little stair step. And in their water, I've got um, a little bit of a probiotic electrolyte mixture that I got from Tractor Supply mixed in here. Um, and they've got their feeder, and I've got some grit mixed in with their feeder. But then I've also started fermenting some of their feed. I've started fermenting their feed um, inside in my kitchen, and I let it ferment for about three days, and they absolutely love it. Um, I think I'm going to switch to primarily giving them the fermented feed and not the dry um, stuff. So fermenting the feed, the reason that I decided to do that was because um, I saw a video from a YouTube channel called Chickenlandia. She's really great. She's got some really informative videos. But it stretches their food um, farther. So you can actually spend less money on feed if you ferment it because it expands. You know, when you put it in the water, it expands so it, there's more volume there. But it also, um, since it ferments and has like the good bacteria and stuff, the feed is, the, nut the nutrition is more bioavailable for the chickens. Um, so they actually get more uh, nutrients they get more from the feed so it makes it stretch longer so you have to end up using less feed and save money that way and um, I mean fermented stuff and gut bacteria like I'm all about that these are my girls and they seem really happy in here um, I wanted um, a minimum of four chickens in my flock um, I heard that that was like a good number because they are flock animals and I really didn't need more than four hens um, because of our egg needs. We have a very, we have a small family, just my husband and my daughter and I, and we don't eat that many eggs. So four hens was plenty for our egg needs. See, they love to eat the fresh grass and weeds. They eat the fresh grass and weeds. They love their fermented feed. Um, they scratch around scratch around in the dirt and I'm sure they find all kinds of bugs and things so I think that um, a chicken tractor is a really good option if you and you know if you can't free range your birds because of you know your space or you have dogs or you know whatever the reason but if you want to have backyard chickens I think a chicken tractor is a really great option. There's never going to be any kind of odor or anything. I never have to clean anything. Like all the droppings, all of their droppings literally just go in the grass and, and actually fertilize my lawn. So I say lawn, it's just weeds, but it's going to build the soil and improve the soil. And I got this little pullet today just a couple hours ago. Um, I think she might be two weeks younger than these girls over here, but I got her from the same person, um, and these actually were part of the same flock. They were raised together from chicks, so they know each other, um, but um, my chicken dealer did tell me to kind of give them, like put them where they can see each other for today, just to see how they're gonna do. So um, my chicken lady, 
told me to wait until tonight when um, the sun starts to set and the chickens go up to roost for the night to that is the best time to introduce a new chicken to the flock so I will then take this uh, chicken and go in and just set it up on the roost bar and you know at when it's dark outside all chickens want to do is be up on their roost bar that's where they're safe so that's what I'll do I'll, I'll I'll put this chicken on the roost bar tonight and when they wake up in the morning they should be just one happy flock so that is what's been going on this week that is how the whole chicken adventure has been going um, it's had its ups and downs um, I've been stressed I didn't really realize I told my husband that I kind of feel a little bit like I felt when my daughter was born and she was a newborn because um, it's like you have something that's so vulnerable that you're responsible for um, that yeah it just it just pulls at your heart that there's something that that you love you know obviously the chickens are not my daughter but I care about them and I feel responsible for them and everything wants to eat them and they're so vulnerable um, and that is stressful but I want a farm one day and I just gotta do it I just gotta jump in and um, that's what I'm doing these chickens are me getting my feet wet into the world of farming so so far I love them I know I should have you know after I lost that first chicken I was like I've got to toughen up and not get attached to these birds but I'm so attached to them um, I don't know they're just they're really special animals so I'm just really thrilled to be on this chicken adventure and um, in just a couple of weeks um, sapphire gems um, mature fast and they start laying around 16 weeks of age and they'll be 16 weeks in the middle of April so by the end of April um, beginning of May I should have eggs which is really really exciting um, if you do want to see that or other other chicken videos other gardening tutorials uh, garden tours things like that go ahead and hit the like button on this video and hit the subscribe button so you can see my future uh, videos thank you so much for watching this video and subscribing and uh, can't wait to see you next time happy growing